What is up guys, I do hope you're well, my name is Mark and today we're looking at some more r slash am I the butthole. If you'd like to skip the initial waffle, timestamps are in the description and along the timeline below, so please feel free to do so. But if you are new here, please consider hitting that like, that subscribe and maybe that notification bell too, as it all really helps out our channel. The podcast should be being up to date now, I know there were some issues with it before, but hopefully it should be fixed now and they should be flowing through on the daily. And you guys are blowing me away with these new memberships just lately. We had Edward AI, thank you very much for joining us. I always see you around and your support is absolutely amazing. And Tina Rawson, thank you so, so much for your support too. It really does mean the world. And everyone that takes the time out of your day to sit there and listen to me, absolutely crazy. I'm so thankful for you. Thank you for being here and let's get on with today's stories. Much love guys. Our first story comes from Iromalg. Am I the arsehole for refusing to be in my father's wedding, even though I cheated too? A story as old as time. My female 27, father 50, cheated on my mother for five years with a younger woman, currently 32, and he left my mother when his mistress got pregnant. It tore our family apart. I resent my father because my mother actually loved him and she is still dealing with this, even one year after he left her. I stayed on okay terms with him because I was the one to pick up and drop off my younger brother at his place. Last week I picked up my brother, my father had big news. He proposed to his girlfriend and wanted me to be his best woman. It made me kinda mad, not gonna lie, but I kept calm and told him no. He said that what happened between him and mum was none of our business and that I should respect this new relationship. I said I respect it but that doesn't mean I condone it. Obviously I would never hound him randomly about it but I don't approve of it and I don't like her. She knew the whole time my mum and we existed. My dad was having none of it and he told me to get off my high horse because I had cheated too and I had no right. And I guess. When I was 17 I was with this boy for 3 months. I went to a party, got shit faced and made out with a classmate for a total of 10 minutes. I felt so bad I called my boyfriend crying and we talked it out. We broke up. I told my dad and in 10 years, I never did something like that again. I've been with my partner for five years. I told him he could not equate it at all. He called me a hypocrite and that he was glad to know who I am. Driving home, I felt like I was a bit harsh. He is still my father and he is not a bad father. I just don't want to be in his wedding. I would still go, but am I the asshole? You know, your father initially went into that relationship with the other woman knowing it could break your family up, which it did. So I. I can't blame you for not wanting to be a part of that wedding, wanting to celebrate almost like your family being broken up. Sure, your father may be happy but right now, but the rest of your family is still probably hurting from this as it's only one year later. And for him to compare a 17 year old kissing another guy at a party to a 50 year old cheating and sleeping with another woman and getting her pregnant is absolutely ridiculous. Sure you can say like cheating is cheating and that's that but at the same time in life you transition from a child to an adult. I don't think 17 year old is quite an adult yet and we all make stupid mistakes in our life and she admitted it straight away whereas this father was clearly cheating behind the wife's back got her pregnant so it was it was more malicious than just than just a silly kiss you know. So I'm personally going to go with not the arsehole in the story, but I'd love to know your thoughts as well. And I respect your thoughts. Please don't think because if we have a different opinion that I'm against you or anything like that. I see it quite a lot in the comments like, oh no Mark, you're totally wrong. How dare you have that opinion? Honestly, I respect your opinion and I, I encourage you to bring it on to me, please. <laughs> There's been many times when I've read a comment and thought, oh yeah, that's right. And it's changed my opinion. So I really do encourage it. But let's go down to the comments below to see what we can find. Eat More Unicorn said, not the arsehole, you kissed another guy once when you were still a kid. Your dad hid the fact that he's been screwing around another woman, did it for five years and knocked her up. The situations aren't even comparable. Your dad is trying to manipulate you by saying you cheated too. The situations are not the same. He's the arsehole. Arsehole in Wonderland says, great name. Not the arsehole, you were 17 and made a drunken bad decision for 10 minutes, then felt horrible about it. He was in his 40s with a wife and children, made a calculated horrible decision for 5 years and doesn't seem to feel bad or accept responsibility. Not the same thing at all. Band X amount of time says, not the arsehole, it's perfectly reasonable not to want to support the relationship that your father broke your family with. And there's also no comparison between a teenager hooking up with someone at a party and a grown ass man betraying his family. Tell your dad where to stick it. Oh. 
Howard Project says, not the arsehole. The difference between what your father did and what you did is similar to the difference between a four-year-old kid grabbing a candy bar in the store and getting caught versus a grown-ass adult holding the place up at gunpoint. Not only is he an arsehole for deliberately cheating and hiding this from your mother for years, he's also a manipulative arsehole for attempting to make you think that what you did was in any way comparable to what he did. Now, I turn it to you guys. What do you guys think of this story? Let me know in the comments below and don't forget to vote on that poll in the description for story one. Lady Ashara says, Am I the arsehole for yelling at my neighbour because she called CPS on my husband? A little background, I, 32 female, live with my husband, 33 male, and our two children, Jake, 6 male, and Amy, 3 female. A young couple, probably in their early 20s, are our next door neighbours. Two weeks back, my husband took Jake and Amy to the park nearby. Ideally, I would have gone too, as it's easier to manage the kids when we're both there, but I had important office work that day, and husband had a day off. Jake wanted to use the swing, but husband forbade it, since he was alone with the two of them, and said they'd just walk around. Sometime later, Amy got a pebble in her shoe or something and he sat down on the bench to check it. He specifically asked Jake to stay beside him, but Jake, I guess really wanted to swing and seeing his dad's attention elsewhere, decided to run for it. He was trying to go too fast, lost his balance and fell. All this happened in a matter of seconds. That was it. They came back home. We talked to Jake about it and told him why he was wrong and we moved the fuck on. Imagine our surprise when CPS, or the equivalent to CPS in our country, we don't live in the US, pulls up at our door and says that they've been given reports about how my husband was a negligent parent and how he put Jake's life in danger. They mentioned the Parkinson where, according to their version, my husband totally forgot about Jake and that led to Jake seriously hurting himself. There were no serious injuries, he had minor scratches on his hands and knees. Obviously, they did not find anything wrong. Didn't tell us about the identity of the reporter though. Husband mentioned that our neighbours were present that day in the park and later when I asked, the woman confessed. She even went on to say that my husband was almost abusive and that she was just looking out for Jake. Why do I believe my husband's version and not hers? Well firstly, he's my husband and I trust him and also because Jake confessed, he disobeyed his dad. I was super mad at this and I generally don't get that angry but she was accusing my husband of being abusive and she called CPS on him. I yelled at her that she didn't know shit about anything and she was just trivialising abuse and parental negligence. She cried and I told her to fuck off. Her boyfriend thinks that she was just mistaken and I should forgive mistakes. Am I the asshole? I think the problem with that mistake is that it can have such severe consequences. You know, I've heard stories in the past where a child had had CPS called on them and then they say something stupid to them and it makes them look closer into their lives and actually ruins lives because it puts such stress on the families that the married couples are broken up because of it. Sometimes the child has to be taken away for interviews and all this kind of stuff. So absolutely, it, it can destroy lives. And I, I've personally seen this as well. And we're gonna head straight down to the comments with this one. Starting with Karis Vaughan, not the arsehole. That type of mistake could destroy families' lives. A child running off while a parent is distracted by another parent is normal behavior. That neighbor needed to mind their own damn business. Now, if true abuse or neglect was ongoing, I would support it. But a kid being a kid, good on you for standing up for that one. Aja444 says, To forgive her mistake, she needs to call CPS and rescind her statement. She needs to say, I overreacted, and if I can write a letter or anything that will undo what I did, I'd like to. For her to say he was almost abusive is to say he was not abusive. I'm a dad and I'm probably almost abusive all the time. For example, I feed my kids vegetables, but the vegetables are next to the napkins. And if you think about it, I'm almost feeding them napkins just about every day. <laughs> Smart Improvement 143 says, Not the arsehole. I wish people would stop calling over dumb crap. Kids trip and fall over their own feet. Don't call. Parent pushes kid making them trip and fall. Call. Charlie Daffini says, Not the arsehole. What your neighbour did could have had severe repercussions on your entire family. This kind of stuff happens with young kids all the time. Your son wanted to play on the swings, so he took the opportunity of his distracted father to do so. Calling the equivalent of CPS on you should not have been her first reaction. You could have lost your kids and your husband could have ended up facing possible prison time, depending on your country. If she was that concerned about the well-being of Jake and Amy, she could have taken you aside later in the day and addressed the issue with you first. Now, I turn it to you guys. What do you guys think of this story? Let me know in the comments below and don't forget to vote on that poll in the description for story two. Our next story is from Why Is All The Stuff Gone? Am I the arsehole for smoking in my house around a pregnant woman? Am I the arsehole for smoking in my house around a pregnant woman? I, 21 female, am roommates with another guy from college, 21 male, for about two years. 
we were both really chill and never had any problems. We have both stayed away from hard drugs, but we do drink alcohol, smoke cigarettes and smoke weed. We have hosted some wild parties in this house. We didn't host parties since Aunt Rona came to town, but we both continued to smoke cigarettes and weed in the house. Neither of us had a problem smoking anything indoors and neither did our landlord. It's a crazy college town. He wouldn't have gotten any tenants if they said they can't smoke inside the house. Problem came in the form of his pregnant friend about a month ago. He said that she got evicted and that she was jobless and needs a place to stay for a few days urgently. I agreed. Obviously we both stopped smoking inside the house. It was just for a few days, so I did my best to make her feel comfortable. But the more accommodations we made for her, the more she asked for. She didn't like when we played music or TV as she was a light sleeper and gets headaches easily. The smell of meat makes her nauseous so we can't cook or eat meat inside the house. Me and my friend just went to the roof when we felt like having a smoke. Days became weeks and I asked him when she was leaving. At this point, I'm getting annoyed at not being able to do what I want in my own place. He told me he's telling her nicely to leave without saying, get out, but she keeps either begging for some more time or starts crying and he backs out. Weeks became a month and I had had enough. Since yesterday, I've started smoking inside the house. I mean, it's not like I deliberately light up when she's in the room. Ashtray is by the window, so I sit there and smoke when I want. If she is in the room, I just give her a heads up and then start smoking. I've also started watching Netflix on the TV when we don't have classes and started cooking meat in the house again. Yesterday night, she yelled at me how an inconsiderate bitch I was and I reminded her that it's my place and unless she paid rent that I didn't know about, she doesn't have a say in what I can or what I cannot do. My roommate is really nice and he's tried his best to help a friend out. He isn't the father, but even his patience is wearing thin and he supported me. We aren't going to throw a homeless and jobless pregnant woman into the street, but I am also done with making adjustments to my way of living for someone who doesn't even pay rent. She found a way to be okay with how me and my roommate live or she can find another place to stay. So, am I the arsehole? Edit, please read. Hey guys, we've decided to ask her to leave whether or not she has things figured out. She has to leave in a week. She gets recognised as a legal resident if she stays for more than four weeks and me and my roommate really don't want that to happen. I do feel like an ass for this, but not enough to house a person, plus maybe their baby indefinitely. You know, we've seen situations like this many times on, the, on this channel, and it always sort of comes down to, you just need to give that person a deadline. They're entitled, they're inconsiderate, they need to be given a deadline to get out immediately. Obviously, at the end there, you haven't given the deadline anyway, simply because if they're more than four weeks, they're becoming a resident in your house. So yeah, they are the arsehole, but I also, I, I might get shot for this one as usual, but I also think that you're the arsehole in the situation for choosing to smoke in front of a pregnant woman. Yeah, I know she's being entitled, but it's not the child's fault, is it? It's not the child's fault, and it could potentially endanger them. I don't know. I don't know all the ins and outs of smoking around pregnant women and how bad it can be, but it certainly can't be a good thing, right? So my verdict on this one would be, and everyone sucks here, simply because everyone does suck here. And that includes the friend who bought her in the house. I knew he was doing a good thing to begin with, but then he's not given her any any indication of when she's got to leave or anything like that. And he's being very weak on that, especially when he brought her into the house, you know. You've got to deal with that. Just deal with it, come on. Uh, let's go to the comments below to see what we can find. Everyone sucks here. She needs to stop taking advantage of the situation. You'll need to be real blunt with her and give her a specific deadline. And you need to stop behaving in a passive aggressive way because you're frustrated. I get it, you should be able to do what you want in your own space, but this isn't something that only has an impact on you, and you know that. Don't be childish and harm the baby because you're fed up. Tell her exactly when she needs to be out by. RD Rock says, everyone sucks here. She's an over-controlling, inconsiderate, entitled mooch. But <laughs> I love mooch. But don't endanger an innocent child. It's not their fault their mum sucks. It would have been fine if you did all the other stuff that she forced you to stop. But the smoking thing is taking it a little too far. I'm sorry you're stuck in this shitty situation. Fruity Nutcase says, not the arsehole. I do hate smoking indoors, but since your place is allowed, no problem. Also, you waited, respected. Other demands were ridiculous. Smoking was reasonable to do outside. She's not a resident. You expected her to stay only a short time. And now she seems to think she's living there fully. I think it's time to really say it to her face to get out, aloud. She is a guest and it's about time she finally actually goes to live somewhere else. Poor baby though. Sage Nonsense says, you're the arsehole. If you want her to leave, tell her to leave, but don't endanger the health of an infant because you're bitter. Lakasak says, everyone sucks here. She's an arsehole for obvious reasons, but so are you. Dude, if you want her to leave, then just grow some backbone and tell her she needs to move out. 
Smoking around her could really fuck up the baby and none of it's its fault. Now I turn this story to you guys. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below and don't forget to vote on that poll in the description. And our next story is from Skink Mantin. Am I the ass for not allowing my eldest daughter, 24 female, to come stay with me in my new big house after she was kicked out by her boyfriend? Well, my ex-wife and I divorced eight years ago. She had an affair and left me for the AP. I know I was a crappy husband back then. I was an alcoholic and I was verbally abusive. And two years before we ended our marriage, I stopped drinking. I picked my shit up and tried doing my duties as a husband and started going to MC, but it was all for nothing. My eldest daughter, however, still chose her mother over me, even with after the betrayal. The other two daughters didn't pick any side and maintained a healthy relationship between us. The divorce, of course, was nasty. She got the primary custody of the kids, got to keep the house, and I had to pay the child support, but no alimony was awarded. A few months later, I lost my job. I was unable to pay child support, and I was constantly arrested and put to jail for about three and a half years. And my daughter, together with my ex-wife, liked to watch me suffer. A year ago my parents died and since I was their only child I inherited their wealth, although not much but still enough. A few months ago I got a new house, my youngest daughter who is 18 has been staying with me. Their mother moved into another country with the AP, my eldest daughter broke up with her boyfriend and she was kicked out of their apartment they shared. She asked if she could stay in my house and I refused and told her to call her mother to come get her, lol. Later my ex-wife calls me saying I'm the arsehole for not wanting my daughter to stay with me and that is unfair because her sister is staying in my house. I have to admit, I do feel guilty, but she's also an adult and could sort her shit out. But am I the asshole here? My daughter is introverted and suffers from anxiety. Edit, I tried for years to have a normal relationship with my daughter. Even tried to ask her sisters to have a normal healthy relationship, but just like her mother, she treated me like shit throughout the years. Even refused to come visit me when it was my turn to have the kids. One of the very first lines got me that it says I was an alcoholic and I was verbally abusive and it was two years before you ended your marriage. So like it was like you know that you was an abusive person back then so your daughter probably didn't have the best upbringing and she probably got a lot of the brunt of that. So surely you got to understand where your daughter was coming from that she didn't want to stay with you because of that. And then the next line that jumped out to me was she asked if she could stay in my house and I refused and told her to call her mother to come get her, lol. The fact that you actually put a lol on it makes you look like you're getting some kind of sick, sadistic pleasure out of it. It's absolutely crazy. You had the chance to take your daughter in and hopefully build some bridges with her from like, obviously she had a bit of a shitty past with you and you could have built those bridges, but you fucked up again. So I do think you are the asshole in the story and I think you must know that. There's no way you couldn't know that from talking about your past. The fact that you brought that up, you know you was a shitty person back then most likely ah so let's go to the comments below to see what we can find moon girl 12 says you're the arsehole you're abusive during your daughter's formative years her choosing her mum over you is the consequence of your decisions regan x says you're the arsehole and you know it don't underestimate how traumatic your alcoholism and verbal abuse was for your daughter she was 14 when you stopped drinking of course she sided with her mother after seeing what you put her through. You should be ashamed of yourself for your behaviour when she was a child and trying to make amends however you can, not rejoicing in her misfortune and in your ability to deny her the help she has asked of you. This was your chance to show your daughter that you had changed for the better and to prove that you could be a loving, supportive father. You threw it away out of spite. Dismal Dog says, you're the arsehole and quotes, lol. Duchess Pipsqueak says, you're the arsehole, but not for refusing to let your kid come live with you. You're the arsehole because you're conveniently ignoring years of abuse and expect everyone to just be okay with what you did in the past because you've changed. That's not the case. Your marriage fell apart because of your abusive attitude and drinking. Her cheating sucks, but by the time you figured out you needed to change, she already moved on. That's on your years of inaction and jerky behaviour. A person can only take so much. Your daughter witnessed all of this and is clearly having issues forgiving. And who could blame her? And now, the one time she needs her dad, He's once again being a self-righteous arsehole and proving that you're not so different than before. Still an arsehole, just a sober one now. You seem to be playing the too little too late game and adding victim to the mix. It will take years to repair the damage you did prior and even longer since you keep adding on to it. Eventually, all your children will see you for who you are and reject you. If you don't change, you'll be very alone one day. And I think that is the best response we're going to get on that story. And I, I can only totally agree with it. That guy is going to end up very lonely the way he's treated his daughter. The whole too little, too, too late game is 
absolutely true. Ah, oh, my word. Now I turn it to you guys. What do you guys think of this story? Let me know in the comments below and don't forget to vote on that poll in the description. Once again, guys, thank you for being here. You are truly, truly appreciated as always the, taking the time out of your day to watch these videos. It's still crazy to me. Thank you so, so much. And I will see you in the next one. Take care, guys. Much love.